Have you ever asked God to strike your vehicle with lightning? I haven't, but I know a man who did, and he's now a missionary in Cambodia. And this morning, I got the chance to talk with him about how God worked in his life so that he could be in Cambodia. Gary, welcome to Mission Viewfinder. Thank you. It's good to be here. I love watching it every time you have a video. Yeah, I I always see your comments. I'm like, oh, he's he's on there again. (laughs) I actually I try to be first as soon as it pops up. (laughs) Yeah, I think you are a lot of the time. (laughs) So how did it even come about that you wanted to be in Cambodia or that you were interested in being a missionary in Cambodia? Okay, what happened is uh, I was born in the generation where uh, we grew up during the Vietnam War. And from early on, elementary school, all day long, in, uh, in the news, they would bring in the t- television and everything was about uh, the Vietnam War. Vietnam, 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 Mekong, 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 Mekong. Mekong River, the Mekong is a river for people that didn't grow up in that, in that area. And it runs down to Vietnam. So I heard that my whole life. And we thought we were going to the Vietnam War, but I missed it by about three years because of uh, when I graduated. Well, anyway, so later on, when God began to deal with my heart with missions, I thought, wow, wouldn't it be neat if I ended up in Vietnam? So my church went on a trip to Vietnam in Cambodia about 16 years ago. And uh, I do gospel track missions. That's basically what I do. I'm not a pastor. I just hand out tracks. And that wasn't really open in Vietnam at the time. We went there for three days, came to Cambodia for 11 days. And God began to melt my heart for the Cambodian people. And this is uh, my eighth or ninth time here in 16 years. And uh, so that's how I got interested in Cambodia. Very cool. Very cool. So you came on that trip and then you were back um, in, in the States and, you know, your life there and whatnot. What was there was there was sort of a, a time where you doubted that God really wanted you to come. Oh, yeah. Over 16 years, there's ups and downs. But there was a major one that is how I ended up on here, what we're talking about. Basically, um, a little over a couple of years ago, I I lost faith that God was going to get me here. And it's like, OK, I'm going to be in the States, you know. And so after I lost my faith that he was going to open the door for me, then uh, I went out and bought a truck because I felt like a truck represents me. And it was all pride. And what that truck represented for me was an, a guy that shouldn't have bought a truck because I didn't have the money. I mean, I, I did if I stayed in the States, but it, almost right after I bought it, I was like, oh, Lord, it looked like you were going to open the door now. And now I've, I blew it because I have this truck and and there's no way I can pay this off. And uh, and they took away our overtime and there was just no way I could pay this truck off in like less than five years or, you know, whatever. And so I, I just thinking I literally began to pray, God, please, uh, I pay insurance, just have have uh, lightning strike my truck. And uh, I know that sounds far-fetched, but I believe in the God of the universe. He knows where every electron is in the universe, and that's that's how I think of him. Mm-hmm. And I just began to pray, God, please just strike my truck and, and let it be paid for. And I, and I begged him, God, please uh, don't let the Cambodians miss out on the gospel because of my sin, because of my mistake, uh, uh, because I bought this out of pride and I recognize it. And Lord, please, I'll, I'll never do this again. Uh, please, I'm begging you, Lord, don't let them miss out on the gospel because of my mistake. I, I confess my sin to you, Lord. I admit I made a mistake. and uh, But I, I begged him for two years, and I, I even told a couple of guys at work, you know, I, I'm praying for God to strike my truck with lightning. And they laughed at me like, oh, yeah, Gary, God's going to strike your truck with lightning because you got yourself in debt. And I'm like, well, all I can do is that. I'm a big believer, and when you want something from God, all he can say is no. And, he, and if he says no, that's right. Uh, but I prayed and I believed it so much that after every lightning storm, I would go out and see if my truck was there. Uh, but I would ask, I asked God, you know, don't hurt anyone and don't, don't hurt anything. Just strike my truck. And uh, I was doing all kinds of stuff. I was parking near trees so they would fall over and all that. And then I thought, well, I don't really have to do that. God can do whatever he wants to do. Right. So anyway, one day I'm at work, I worked overnight. I was an aircraft mechanic and I go, I go out in the morning and go to start my truck. It, it's a 2017. This is 2020. It's not an old truck. Very nice. So I go to start it and it's just dead, deader than a doornail. We even put a new battery in it. It didn't do anything. It didn't ding. It didn't do anything. So we had it towed to the dealership and I got a call from the dealer and, he, and he's like, Hey, is this Gary? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we talked a bit and he goes, do you have insurance? And I said, yeah, why? And he said, because you need to tell your insurance, your truck's been struck by a lightning. And I'm like, Woo-hoo! I didn't say it out loud, but I said it in my heart, you know? And uh, so sure enough, they had a vehicle before that 
there at that dealership that had been struck by lightning and it had every same symptom or whatever you were you use for cars anyway so sure enough it was a lightning strike and they totaled it and i was totally uh, removed from that debt where i could come to cambodia where i am right now that's so awesome so they went at the dealership they said that it would take a lot of work to fix it yeah they, what they said it would take about 42 days of intensive uh, high cost electrical mechanic work to to redo the whole thing and then they weren't they weren't even sure if that would be uh good after that because that's why insurance companies total your vehicle when it gets struck by lightning because it'll never be the same now the truck didn't get blown up i didn't walk out there and there was a pile of ashes and i'm like oh no i just walked out there and they had to figure it out the electrical system was fried the computer was fried everything and in the automotive industry it's just uh it's like having a, a flood vehicle. It's not ever the same. And if it gets beyond a certain point, they total it. So that's what they, they did for me. But my, my thing that I wanted to share with you, and I think the same reason you asked me, and that I share with all my friends is, oh, not look at what Gary prayed and the all has answered. No, it's I'm a guy that didn't deserve to have my prayer answered because I made the mistake. I used I had pride. I had sin. I failed. I did all that. But I begged God, and I and he's a God of mercy and a God of grace. And he wants to reach people with the gospel. He didn't do that for me. He did it for them. And I wanted to share it because to show that we read in the Bible that God controls everything. And we read about Jesus calmed the, the wind and the waves. And we, we say that in church. And we say, Jesus controls the wind and the waves. And we really believe it. And we really mean it. But it bumped up about a thousand times for me when I prayed to the God of the universe. God, please strike my truck with lightning. And he struck my truck with lightning. Not the vehicle beside it, not the one in front of it, not, in, you know, I think there was one empty side and I don't know exactly how it hit. That's all physics. I don't need to know. Uh, but I prayed for the God of universe to have mercy and grace on, on me, on me and the Cambodian people. And, and that's pretty precise, a lightning strike. Yeah, for sure. So I'm just curious, what does that tell you about God and his heart for you and for the people in Cambodia? Well, what it did is it showed me that God does hear our prayers. Now, he doesn't always answer them the way we want. For two years, he didn't, he didn't strike my truck. And he may have, you know, there may have, it may have been the other way around where he never struck it and just made me wait and wait and wait and wait. But it had already been a 16-year process, and I think he knew I was uh, probably near the end of my rope or something. Uh, for whatever <laughs> reason, I don't know. We don't know why God does what he does, but we know what he did, you know. Right. And uh, what I see in it is, that God hears everyone's prayers. He hears your prayers. He hears my prayers. He hears somebody out there right now that's going to hear this. They're so desperate for some answer to prayer, and they think God won't answer it. Uh, and that's how I felt. I felt like, oh, I've made the ultimate mistake. I know God can do everything, but but I really messed up. But he answered my prayer. And because he says in the Bible that, that if we want something, we ask in his name, and if it glorifies him, that he will do it. We ask in Jesus' name. And that's what, what I did. And so it's an encouragement to people. I got myself in a really, really bad crushing situation and it would have affected me and people uh, around the world, but specifically the Cambodians. Uh, and so what you see is that God will answer your prayers for his glory and to help you because he, he is our help and because you have an effect on other people's lives. He's going to hear our prayer. Now, it may not be exactly what you want, but I want you to have the confidence that the God of the universe that controls every single lightning bolt and everything that goes on on earth, he's the one that's hearing your prayers. He's, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And all those miracles you saw in the Bible, that's the God that we serve. And so if he'll do that for me, he'll, he'll do stuff for anybody. Yeah, God is the same. He doesn't change. So you've been here in Cambodia for, well, here in Cambodia, I'm in Thailand. You've been in Cambodia for, what, a month? This December 9th. I, I showed up here. When I got to Korea, I was waiting for my COVID-19 results and uh, I didn't have them and, and my flight was coming up and they they weren't supposed to let me come all the way over here if I didn't have everything. But I told them that, you know, the tests are there. I had an earlier negative one uh, from the day before, different kind of test. And they made me sign a paper saying, well, all right, well, if you show up over there and, and they don't let you in, it's not on us. I'm like, well, if I go back to the States now, I automatically lose. If I show up in Cambodia, I have a chance. So I show up in Cambodia and, and I hear from the other missionaries. There were six missionaries that had been sent back the day before or the flight before or something like that because they didn't have everything right. And I'm thinking, oh, Lord, please, I'm begging you. If I go back to the States, this is it. I'm done. I can't go to Cambodia anymore. I, I, I'll run out of money. Everything. I, I, I retired. 
I, I retired. I left my company on the fifth. I flew out on the fifth and I retired in the air on the sixth. This is how an anxious I was to get here. And so anyway, I'm like, Lord, I gave up everything. And, and please, I have nothing to go back to. And I, 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 I believe you want me in Cambodia. So, anyway, so I show up and they start yelling at me because uh, the, the name for the, uh, for the medical place and the test weren't the same. It didn't have a stamp. It didn't have a signature on this thing. That thing was black. I had nothing that you're supposed to have. And the guy was yelling at me for 30 minutes. And I'm telling him, no, this is how they do that there. And he said, you don't tell me how they do it. I tell you how they do it. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, after a while, this other guy came up and, and, and did some stuff. And he, he said, he said, just, 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 that. and anyway, so they made me sign a paper. And anyway, so I got in. So it's, I'm just telling you, according to everything, I shouldn't even be here. Now I did have the positive. I'm, 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 I had the, the good test where it wasn't positive. Don't anybody freak out. I, I'm allowed to be here and, and everything was right. I'm just saying Satan was really fighting it. And God just got me all the way in. And everything since then, it would just take too much time to, to tell everything. But just over the years, God has shown me over and over and over and over and over again that he wants me here. And, that, and now I'm here in Cambodia. And so far, I've done a lot of administrative stuff. You got to go meet the village chief and all these kind of things. But just in the little time that we've been here between, we took a motorcycle trip and we gave out tracks. But we got to, we got to give out over 4,000 tracks so far. Wow. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just spreading it out like leaves. Well, he didn't send me here for me. And he didn't send me here to say I'm a missionary. He right. sent me here to get the gospel. So that's my prayer uh, at the end of this video. And when you, everybody goes there different ways, if you'd say at least one prayer that God will use me to reach the Cambodians and that I'll be faithful to hand out the tracks as many as I can, you know. Amen. Amen. Gary, is there anything that you would like to say to the people watching this video about God, about missions, anything on your heart? Yeah, just basically this. If you're watching this channel, obviously you have a, uh, an interest in missions. Maybe you want to go. Maybe you think God's calling you to go. Maybe you're questioning if you should go. Uh, or maybe you're you're trying to decide how much you should give to missions or, or how much you should pray. But I, I would just like to say that uh, please keep missions in your heart uh, because we all know uh, as Christians that Christ could come back at any moment. But he wants the gospel spread to all the world. And and here on a mission channel, we're, we're talking about different countries mostly. And so I would just ask that you stay with missions. One of the things that I did that Jonathan, I think he knows a little bit about, but he doesn't know what influence he had on my life. What what and, and, and Hannah, what what I was uh, while I was waiting, one of the things I did for 16 years and more intensely as I got to the end. I, I had a routine. I would watch certain mission videos every day that touched my heart. And, and one of them he did with another missionary in another country. And, uh, and uh, I would watch that missionary every single day because I loved what he said. I mean, it's just so right on. Every, every Christian needs to hear it. Every person in, interested in missions needs to hear it. Uh, and, and I would watch that video every day. And then I would watch, I would watch one that said, uh, uh, who will fill their shoes? And it's just a Christian song saying, when missionaries come off the field, who's going to fill their shoes? I watch that every day. I watched one, uh, the children of the dump here that, uh, in Cambodia, where they, they, they live at the dump and they can never leave. And, 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 and it, I watched that every day. Um, and then a couple other things. But anyway, every single day I kept missions uh, before me. And so if you have an interest in missions, I, I would suggest that you do that. And I would suggest that you remember it's very easy to be excited about God and the Bible and the stories in the Bible and, and, and know them and believe them, but think, well, that was during the Bible period. And, and there's some truth to that, but really the Bible period, we're in the Bible period. We're just not in the old Testament. You know what I'm saying? The all of eternity is the Bible period, but you know what I mean? And right. so it's very easy to go into church and, and, and recognize this awesome God we're serving. But then when you get back to your job or your neighborhood or, or wherever, or your mission work, and you're like, yeah, but this is me. And that was them. No, it's the same God. He loves you. And he wants to reach everybody. And, and if you're watching this uh, vlog, then um, God has something for you in missions, whether it's just praying or giving or going. And I just want to encourage you, uh, read the Bible story. That is the same God that loves you. Watch mission videos, hear their stories, and hear the bad parts too. Because when you get here, it's not all great. But if God called you somewhere, even if it was 100% bad, you need to be there. And one last thought, that if you gave everything in your life and gave all your time and, and, and made every sacrifice that you could as a human, uh, and only one more person got to go to heaven instead of hell, 
it, it may not feel like it's worth it here, uh, just one person, but in eternity, uh, for that one person, and if you get the chance to meet them, it's worth it. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Gary, for sharing your story and the way God is working. It's been inspiring. Thank you for letting me be on this. I love this vlog. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope this was a blessing and an inspiration to you. I know when I, when, when Gary commented with the story, he's like, my truck just got struck by lightning. I was like, you know what? I think we need to do an interview because we got to get this story and share it. So anyway, hope it was a blessing to you. If you're new here and you'd like to subscribe, we'd love to have you join us on this journey of faith and missions. Um, and if you want to support our channel, you have a little free time. Down here, there's a little playlist where we interview other missionaries, and I hope that'll be a blessing to you as well. God bless. We'll see you next time.